Motsky emailed this information to Eric Rothschild, who immediately issued a subpoena to the publisher of Pandas for any drafts the book went through before printing. In a few months, they received two boxes of material. The lawyers sent them to Barbara Forrest, a philosophy professor and author who has been tracking intelligent design for years. She was scheduled to testify in the trial. Oh my goodness, those two boxes contained about 7,000 pieces of paper. And uh, I had to sit down with those documents and just start flipping through them, which is what I did, day and night. After much digging, she hit pay dirt. Buried in these documents were two drafts of pandas straddling the 1987 case of Edwards versus Aguilard, in which the Supreme Court ruled it unconstitutional to teach creationism in public school science class. One draft was written before the case, and the other revised just after. In the first 1987 draft, which is the pre-Edwards draft, uh, the definition of creation reads this way. Creation means that various forms of life began abruptly through the agency of an intelligent creator with their distinctive features already intact, fish with fins and scales, birds with feathers, beaks and wings, etc. The same definition in this draft, after the Edwards decision, reads this way. Intelligent design means that various forms of life began abruptly through an intelligent agency with their distinctive features already intact, fish with fins and scales, birds with feathers, beaks, etc. Same definition, just one is worded in terms of creationism, the other one worded in terms of intelligent design. Everyone said intelligent design is creationism relabeled. Never in our wildest dreams, though, did we think that this would actually be recorded in paper in a way that could be documented in a court case. And that became probably our best single piece of evidence at trial. Barbara Forrest's testimony would make a strong case that the Dover School Board was thrusting religion into the classroom. And in comparing the Of Pandas and People drafts, Forrest discovered that the authors had apparently made their revisions in haste. In cleansing this manuscript, they failed to replace every word properly. I found the word creationists. Um, and instead of replacing the entire word, they just kind of did this. And got design proponents with the C in front and the ISTS in the back from the original word. So the uh, correct term for this transitional form is co-design proponentsists. And, uh, Everyone now refers to this as the missing link between creationism and intelligent design. You've got the direct physical evidence there of a transitional uh, fossil. Barbara Forrest's testimony not only traced the creationist lineage of pandas. Citing a Christian magazine's interview, Forrest let one of the intelligent design movement's own leaders, Paul Nelson, speak for himself. The question he was asked was, is intelligent design just a critique of evolutionary theory or does it offer something more? Does it offer something that humankind needs to know? And this is his answer, quote, easily the biggest challenge facing the ID community is to develop a full-fledged theory of biological design. We don't have such a theory right now and that's a real problem. Without a theory, it's very hard to know where to direct your research focus. Right now, we've got a bag of powerful intuitions and a handful of notions, such as irreducible complexity, but as yet, no general theory of biological design, end quote. The evidence she brought into that courtroom really exposed the hypocrisy of the intelligent design movement in a way that's irrefutable. Uh, you know, she used their own language, things that they had written and said, to show that they themselves knew that this isn't science. And on the stand, Michael Behe was asked how he would define science. Dr. Behe, using your definition, intelligent design is a scientific theory, correct? Yes. Under the same definition, astrology is a scientific theory, using your definition. Correct? Using my definition, 
A scientific theory is a proposed explanation which focuses or, or points to observable physical data and logical inferences. There are many things throughout the history of science which we now think to be incorrect which would fit that definition. Yes, astrology is in fact one. So is the ether theory of the propagation of light and many other, uh, many other theories as well. The ether theory of light has been discarded. That is correct. But you are clear. Under your definition, the definition that sweeps in intelligent design, astrology is also a scientific theory. Yes, that's correct. You know, when you loosen the rules around what is science and uh, permit the supernatural, permit deities, um, you are really destroying what makes science so vitally important to the progress that our civilization has witnessed over the last four or five hundred years. You're going back before the scientific revolution. And, uh, you know, that's a, that's a pretty scary thing. With the scientific revolution, the work of Galileo, Newton, and others banished supernatural explanations from science. But some think the supernatural still has its place. At the very beginning of genetics, uh, the idea of there being a hereditary factor that somehow was responsible for the traits that we have, but one couldn't quite identify what the factor was, that was also initially regarded as supernatural as well. So it's not that supernaturalism hasn't been part of science. In fact, it has been, and it's often led to very fruitful results. And it seems that the evolutionists want to, in a way, uh, ignore or marginalize that very important part of the history. But Barbara Forrest testified that the intelligent design movement's goals are not entirely scientific and are spelled out in a secret Discovery Institute document that had surfaced on the Internet. Their goals are listed quite clearly in the Wedge document. It's their strategy document that they drew up about nine years ago in 1998. Their goal is to completely overthrow all of the effects of, of evolution on society, which they think are uniformly negative. Um, uh, this document states that they want to completely change American culture back to what they believe is its properly religious foundation. They want every area of life to be governed by their particular religious preferences, and they're very clear about that in this document. According to the Wedge document, Darwin portrayed humans not as moral and spiritual beings, but as animals, leading people to abandon objective moral standards. The document lays out an ambitious agenda to overthrow this legacy. To see intelligent design theory as the dominant perspective in science, and to see design theory permeate our religious, cultural, moral, and political life. Though not written by Philip Johnson, the Wedge document is an outgrowth of a broader policy he conceived called the Wedge Strategy. I know it can be made to sound like something sinister and conspiratorial, but the Wedge Strategy, as I've explained it, is a, a quite simple and innocent. When you use a wedge to split a log, you start with the sharp edge of the wedge. My job is to be the sharp edge of the wedge, to use my academic credentials and legal abilities to get some hearing for the uh, proposition that there really is something fundamentally wrong with the Darwinian story. But I can't answer all the questions that arise. And so we need other people to form the thick edge of the wedge to take on the questions that do require a scientific expertise. With Michael Behe and others forming the wide end of the wedge, Johnson hopes the wedge strategy will overturn what he sees as the negative effects of a century and a half of Darwin's theory. The Darwinian...